unlike all the other hooks that we've covered so far, which are actual hooks, use state, use effect, etc., custom hooks are simply the ability to extract component logic into reusable functions, which is a huge upgrade of how React works. Remember in the introductory lesson when we talked about some of the biggest reasons that hooks happened? One of them was don't repeat yourself in code and avoid having to duplicate it across various components or even across lifecycle methods in the same component. Custom hooks make that possible. Up to now, React has had two popular ways to share stateful logic between components, render props and higher order components. We will now look at how hooks solve many of the same problems without forcing you to add more components to your tree. The moment that you realize two components need the same piece of code, you've identified a potential use case for a custom hook. Or if you want to clean up an especially large complex component and modularize some of its functions, custom hooks could be your new solution. You can write custom hooks that cover a wide range of use cases like form handling, animations, declarative subscriptions, timers, and probably many more that I haven't even considered. The sky is the limit. And the best part? Custom hooks use the same hooks that we've been talking about this whole module. They just group a bunch of hooks together inside one wrapper, and you've got a brand new custom hook to drop into whatever component you need. This lesson will teach you exactly what a custom hook can look like and how it can be used inside of another React component. So here is our sample custom hook, close modal on click outside. This is an example of a custom hook you might want to use in your React application. Let's say your site has a number of modals that pop up from time to time. Perhaps in addition to explicitly dismissing them via a close button, you'd like them to dismiss whenever a user clicks outside of the modal's body as well, somewhere else on the screen. While you could certainly write this code and tie it to a particular modal, if you want to apply this behavior to more than one modal, or you want the same sort of functionality with drop-down menus or tooltips, you would be duplicating the code to make this happen. This seems like a perfect opportunity to write a custom hook that encapsulates that logic. So let's talk about a few basics to keep in mind about custom hooks, and then we'll get to the meat of the hook itself. As always, I have given you a custom hook to play around with in a code sandbox example, and I have the code over on the right-hand side of the screen. So if we go here and click open modal, our modal appears. We can see that if I click around inside of it, nothing happens. However, when I click outside of it, it's gone. Beautiful. So first, how do custom hooks work? I want to reiterate that a custom hook is a JavaScript function whose name starts with use and that may call other hooks. The rest of the rules of hooks, which we covered in our second lesson, still apply to custom hooks. Hooks must be called in the same order each time, they can only be used in functional components, etc. But unlike a React component, a custom hook doesn't need to have a specific signature. We decide what it takes as arguments and what, if anything, it should return. So in other words, a custom hook is just like a normal function. The major difference is in its naming. Custom hooks should always start with use so you can easily tell that it's a custom hook. It's considered a best practice to name any custom hooks you may be creating as use XYZ. For instance, this example has use on click outside, but you might also have use fetch data or use on screen or use interval. Just try to make sure to name your hooks use something so that everybody is aware of what they should be doing. So since hooks are just functions, we can pass information between them just like we do with all the other hooks, which you'll see in our code example soon. Each time the state being passed to the hook updates, the custom hook will unsubscribe from the argument value it was in charge of and subscribe to the new arguments value instead. No extra effort is required on our part, which is pretty cool. But enough about the theory, let's see a custom hook in practice. Now keep in mind, this custom hook that we'll be examining should work in exactly the same way as if it was written in the component. All we're doing is extracting some code that could be useful to multiple components into a separate function. Unlike our previous lesson for use context, this example only needs two JavaScript files, but the use on click outside.js file is our custom hook where most of the magic happens. 
Currently, when the component renders, there is a button with the open modal text. Click it and a light blue modal pops up in the center of the screen with the text, hi, I'm a modal, click outside of me and I'll close. Click anywhere inside of the modal and it will stay open. Click outside of it and it will disappear from the screen, replaced once again with the open modal button. So for simplicity's sake, let's take a look at the app.js file first. It's pretty simple to understand, and then we'll dive into our custom hook file. Our app.js file has just two pieces of state that it's responsible for. A ref, modal ref, right here, to keep track of the modal element when it's rendered in the DOM, and an is modal open state to determine when to show or hide the modal. So use ref has reappeared in this particular lesson and it is playing an important role. If you remember from our use ref lesson just a few lessons ago, when the component first renders, since this modal is not present, the modal ref dot current value will be undefined. As soon as the button is clicked and the modal is visible, the modal ref dot current value becomes this JSX right here, modal container and this h4 of hello, I'm a modal. So the button has the onClick function responsible for flipping is modal open state to true, causing it to appear in the DOM. The use onClick outside function, which is right here, which looks like any other function we might declare or import into a functional component, is what determines if the modal should then be closed. You'll notice that it accepts two arguments, the first being a reference to the DOM element that we're keeping track of, modal ref, and the second is a function to close the modal, set is modal open to false. Now that we've examined our component, let's look at use on click outside's actual logic. So the modal in the component is open. There's a ref keeping track of the element in the DOM, and there's a function to close the modal when the proper requirements are met. So how does our custom hook come into play here? Let's see. The custom hook pulls in its own React hook, the use effect hook, and puts it into effect, no pun intended, as soon as the hook is defined. We can see right here. Right inside the use effect, a function named listener is defined. Listener is what determines whether the handler function argument being passed into our custom hook runs or not because listener accepts an event, and in this case, it is a mouse down or touch start event defined just a few lines lower right here. Once that event happens, the function checks if ref.current exists and if ref.current.contains event target. The first check should always return true, but the second check is only true if the user clicks inside of the modal. This is part of the node web API and checks if a node is a descendant of a given node or one of its children which refers to any child components that modal might have as well. If neither of these checks returns true, the handler function runs, and in this case, the handler function being passed in is set is modal open to false, and then the reference DOM element should close. So if the event.target is the modal container JSX or any of its descendants held in reference by the modal ref.current value, nothing should happen in the DOM, which is why when I clicked around inside of the modal, nothing did happen. So back to the custom hook at large. Jump down a few lines after the listener function declaration, and you'll see the event listeners added to the DOM to keep track of mouse down actions or touch start actions. Each of these actions keeps track of clicks in the DOM, and if either of them registers, the listener function fires, checks the event.target, and acts accordingly. One thing to notice is these same event listeners are removed when the use on click outside hook inside of the anonymous function at the bottom of the use effect. This is what's known as a use effect cleanup function. And it's similar to the component will unmount lifecycle method. It serves as a way to prevent memory leaks by unsubscribing from event listeners or API calls or the host of other things that use effect might do, but not all use effects need it. And last but not least, you can see that both the arguments this custom hook accepts, ref and handler function up here, are part of the dependency array of this use effect down here. Anytime one of those arguments updates, which will happen from the component when the open modal button is clicked, this hook will run again. This very same code could be slapped into the app.js file with pretty much no changes to it, and it would work just the same. And there you have it. That's custom hooks in a nutshell. Once you break down what's happening, and realize these custom hooks are just calling the same React hooks that we've been talking about for this whole module, it's not so intimidating, is it? 
And once again, we'll get some practice with these in our app that we'll be refactoring very soon. So just remember, there are so many custom hook possibilities. If you're interested in seeing lots of custom hooks that you can use in your own React apps, there is a use hook site, which I've linked to, and it's a great resource of fun and useful hooks. There's even an Easter egg hook for the Konami code, if you're familiar with that. All right, so in our next lesson, we will sum up everything that we have been learning in this current module. I will see you there. This is the summary of what we've learned in module one. The first thing we covered was why hooks? What problems do they solve? The introductions of hooks into the React framework aimed to address problems that had arisen from only allowing state to exist in class-based components. Problems such as logic that can't be reused between components, classes that confuse both people and machines, and components with so much stateful logic they're hard to understand. Once we had talked about the whys, we looked into the hows. Our first hook to get familiar with was the use state hook, the hook most similar to this dot state, which everyone who's worked with React for any length of time is familiar with. We looked at some functional examples employing use state and compared them to their state component equivalents. Next up, we looked at the use effect hook, the hook responsible for side effects like data fetching, updating the DOM, and subscribing to event listeners. Unlike React lifecycle methods, where disparate data is grouped together and there are only a few methods to choose from, use effect allows for many separate hooks whose side effects will only trigger when the variables they depend on change. A lesser known but still very important hook is the use ref hook, which we discussed next. This hook builds on the ref already present in React, most commonly used to imperatively instruct components on how to act, like telling a component with an input to focus on the input once it's rendered in the DOM. But use ref goes beyond this. It makes it possible to keep track of values over the life of a functional component without causing a component re-render like use state would. Although this may not seem like a big deal, use ref opens up a ton of possibilities within functional components that were previously unheard of. It's really an ace in the hole when you finally realize that you need it. And the final hook that we got acquainted with is the use context hook, which takes React's context API to a whole new level. Now any component, both class and functional, can provide or consume context, thus avoiding prop drilling and improving providing relevant state data only to the components that actually need it. And last, but certainly not least, we discussed custom hooks. Custom hooks are not actually a new hook in React. But the idea that we can extract a group of hooks providing certain functionality into functions to be reused among many components. The real beauty of custom hooks is that they're functions, so we can decide what sorts of arguments they accept and what they return. And even though the logic is abstracted into a separate function, React interprets it just as if the hooks were in line in the components themselves. Custom hooks are a convention that naturally follows from the design of hooks rather than from a React feature. There's a handful of other hooks available, which you can read more about in the lesson if you'd like. But the hooks that I've covered in the previous lessons are the ones I find myself reaching for the most often. Now that we're more confident with the hooks we'll be using to upgrade our existing React application, it's time to put them into practice. But before we can do that, we need to upgrade the version of React our application is running on. Our current version doesn't even support hooks. We need to troubleshoot any issues we might encounter making it run, and we need to ensure that all the developers working on the app will be working with the same versions. Let's get started.